You're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. The sirens sound in Ukraine as Russia launches more attacks. Critical infrastructure near Kyiv is hit. NATO and its Western allies promise more help for Ukraine to defend itself. We will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. We will step up our support and in particular we will provide more air defence systems to Ukraine. At the United Nations, the General Assembly overwhelmingly votes to condemn Russia's annexation of four Ukrainian regions. A staggering decline in the planet's wildlife. A new report shows wildlife populations have dropped by an astonishing 70%. Right-wing American radio host Alex Jones is ordered to pay almost a billion dollars in damages for false claims the Sandy Hook school massacre was a hoax. That reports a controversial diamond has Buckingham Palace reconsidering plans for the crowning of the Queen Consort, with India saying it will bring back painful colonial memories. In the next half hour, we'll be live in Zaporizhia and hear from our correspondents in Kyiv and at NATO headquarters. We start in Ukraine. A critical infrastructure facility near Kyiv has been hit by Russian strikes. At least three explosions have been reported, but there is no information on any casualties. There's also been shelling reported in the southern city of Mykolaiv. At the United Nations in New York, in a symbolic vote, around three quarters of the General Assembly voted to condemn what was described as Russia's attempted illegal annexation of four partially occupied regions in Ukraine. Uh, the vote was tallied in this way. Of the 193 General Assembly members, 143 voted to condemn Russia, 35 abstained, and five, including Russia and Belarus, voted against. President Zelensky this morning addressed the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and had this to say. You're live with Lucy Hawkins, still to come. Right-wing American radio host Alex Jones is ordered to pay almost a billion dollars in damages for false claims the Sandy Hook school massacre was a hoax. We'll be speaking live to our disinformation correspondent, Mariana Spring. She's been following the story for us closely. with Lucy Hawkins. A jury in Connecticut has ordered the conspiracy theorist Alex Jones to pay damages of almost a billion dollars. This is after he falsely claimed that a school shooting in 2012 was a hoax. He was sued by the families of eight of the victims of the Sandy Hook school shooting in 2012. You'll remember that 20 children and six teachers lost their lives. Our North America correspondent Peter Bowes reports. Anita, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. And I'll see you again in a few minutes' time. I've got my headlines coming. Bye-bye. Live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. The sirens sound in Ukraine as Russia launches more attacks. Critical infrastructure on the outskirts of Kyiv is hit. Ukraine saying Russia is using Iranian made kamikaze drones. Further south in Mykolaiv, shelling brings down buildings. NATO and its Western allies promise more help for Ukraine to defend itself. We will step up our support uh, and in particular we will provide more uh, air defence uh, systems uh, to uh, Ukraine. At the UN General Assembly, they overwhelmingly vote to condemn Russia's annexation of four Ukrainian regions. Also ahead, the right-wing American talk show host Alex Jones is ordered to pay almost a billion dollars in damages for false claims the Sandy Hook school massacre was a hoax. Flooding in Nigeria leaves more than 500 people dead and affects millions more. Researchers say the planet's wildlife population has fallen by 70% in the last half century. Are humans to blame? In the next half hour, we'll be live in Brussels, Munich and Lagos.
A rescue effort is underway to pull survivors from the rubble of a Ukrainian residential building hit by a Russian missile strike. This is happening in the southern port city of Mykolaiv. It was hit by a number of missiles in recent hours and comes a day after seven people were killed when a market in the frontline town of Avdivka was also hit. We can show you actually what was left of that residential building. Uh, this is drone video footage clearly and what it shows us is the entire centre of that building completely turned to rubble. Rescuers are there. They have managed to rescue this young boy who was trapped for six hours. And we also know that a man was killed by a separate strike in the city overnight. Away from the front lines, NATO countries have agreed to jointly procure air defence equipment to improve protection over Europe's skies. Here's NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. We will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. We will step up our support uh, and in particular we will provide more uh, air defence uh, systems uh, to uh, Ukraine. Let's take you live to Brussels. We can join our correspondent there, Jessica Parker. Jess, what's NATO agreed to give Ukraine now? Mariana Spring there. Let's take you to Iran now. Reports there overnight of clashes between security forces and protesters in several locations in the country. This is a video of a flag, an Iranian flag, being burnt in the western Kurdistan province. Human rights groups saying security forces have used live ammunition against civilians there. President Raisi has accused the US of seeking to destabilize the Islamic Republic. At least 18 people have died in flooding in northern India. Dozens of villages in Uttar Pradesh have been affected, with some being totally cut off. The monsoon season has extended into October. It normally ends in mid-September. The U.S. and Mexico have agreed a joint plan to prevent Venezuelan migrants crossing their land border. The U.S. will allow 24,000 Venezuelans to fly directly into the country and stay for up to two years in a similar scheme to that organized for Ukrainian refugees. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security says Venezuelans trying to cross overland from Mexico will be returned. You're live with Lucy Hawkins, still to come. Researchers say 70% of the planet's wildlife has disappeared in just half a century. We'll explain why. We'll be live in Lagos with the latest on the floods which have affected millions of people in Nigeria. You're live with Lucy Hawkins. The activist and Nobel Peace Laureate Malala Yousafzai has met victims of Pakistan's devastating floods, all part of an attempt to reinforce the need for critical humanitarian aid to the country. It's only the second visit to her home country since she was shot in the head while returning from school by the Pakistani Taliban a decade ago. Ms Yousafzai praised the bravery of the woman who had been displaced by the deluge, which has left nearly 2,000 people dead. She's been speaking to the BBC's Saha Baluk. Aziz, very good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Nigeria being hit by some of the worst flooding that they've seen now in over a decade. And as Aziz was saying, uh, there is more rain to come. So a huge amount of concern right across Nigeria. Do stay with us in five minutes time. We will have a special program for you on Ukraine. What recent developments mean for the war there. The threat of escalation after the barrage of missiles we've seen being fired into Ukraine over the past few days. We'll be we looking at what weapons Ukraine still needs, what weapons Russia has right now, and how this is all affecting people inside the country. So stay with us for that. The pounding of Ukrainian cities and towns by Russian missiles continues. And while not as devastating as the bombardment of a few days ago, cities and towns across the country are continuing to be hit. The UN General Assembly has issued a resolution calling Moscow's annexation of Ukrainian territory illegal, while Ukraine's Western allies have this week committed more military aid. Russia has repeated its position that the West, by helping Ukraine, is a direct party to the conflict and has warned 
warned that the admission of Ukraine to NATO could trigger World War III. Turkey is also trying to act as a mediator. President Erdogan will raise the issue of peace talks when he meets with President Putin. So with diplomacy on the one hand comes the increasing show of military force on the other. And where does all of this leave the people of Ukraine? Is escalation inevitable or could peace still prevail? Well, with me here in the studio is Arisia Lusevich, who is head of the Ukraine Forum at Chatham House, and our security correspondent Frank Gardner with me here in the studio. We're delighted as well to welcome Professor Katerina Vulchik from the University of Birmingham's Centre for Russian, European and Eurasian Studies. Dr. Justin Bronk, Senior Research Fellow at the London-based military think tank RUSI. He is an expert in air power and technology. And from BBC Russia's service, uh, Olga Ivshina joins us as well. We'll be hearing from all of our fantastic panel in a few minutes time but first frank is going to set the tone for the discussion he's going to remind us of the key recent developments and statements and what they might tell us about the risk of escalation and i don't see this caving in actually the resolve is strengthening thank you all very much for being with us in this special program as we look at the escalation in the war in ukraine and thank you very much for joining us goodbye